try and get fresh with you in there? Oh, no. I can't stand it in there anymore. I know just what you mean. Must be my arm in there, huh? You see them rocks over there? Oh, well, why don't you and I walk over there in the shade and let you get a little bit of fresh air? Would you like that? Get back inside there. Lock them in there. Come right here with me now. Just walk real slow. Make one little stop here. Get us a little bit of this. Like a little bit of this? Feeling so poorly. We still got four days to go to Furnace Hill. I can't get back in that sweat box anymore. Please let me ride outside. Honey, I don't make the rules. The men that own the prison make the rules. And the rules says that all prisoners got to ride inside the wagon at all times. But you know the old saying about rules, don't you? that they made to be broke. Well, maybe you and I could work a little something out. I mean, when you get to Furnace Hill, you're gonna find out mighty quick, girl, that uh, being nice to the guards is gonna make life a whole lot easier for you. Get up. Get up. Good morning, Harvey. Good morning, Mr. Barkley. Oh, sure, a hot one today. Well, is there any other kind of day in this part of the country? Well, now that you mention it, uh, no, I guess not. I uh, guess uh, that stockholders meeting out at the mine is going to be pretty hot, too. What makes you say that? Well, I heard a couple of the stockholders talking about uh, cutting back production. That's going to hurt Hayes Center pretty bad. Oh, don't you worry about that, Harvey. I'm sure the Barkley family has enough stock to prevent anything like that from happening. Well, folks here are sure going to be happy to hear that, Mrs. Bar Barkley. I almost forgot a telegram oh. just came for you. Oh. oh, dear. Something wrong? It's from Heath and Jared. They were supposed to be here for the stockholders' meeting, but now they're delayed in Sharpville until tomorrow. Well, I guess I'll have to go by myself. Would you get me a buggy, please, Harvey? Sure, right away. Uh, but, uh, look, that uh, trip out the mine's pretty long. You want a driver? Oh, no, no, I can manage. You know, I can't tell you how much this town appreciates what you and your family have done for us. We just wish there was just something we could do for you. Oh, there is, Harvey, there is, but, uh, 
I'm afraid it's impossible. Now, you just name it. All right. On my next visit, could you possibly, could you just possibly arrange for a nice, cloudy day? <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. We still get a hundred dollars for the woman? The furnace hill only pays for live bodies. Oh, oh boy. Hello. I hit a rock and lost the wheel. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to help me get it back on. a while back there on the road. That's right. You from around here? No. Just visiting? I'm on my way to the Rose Mountain Mine. All right, come on. Up higher! Where are you from? Stockton, California. That's well, a long way, ain't it? Mm-hmm. need to lose our hundred dollars after all. Put her in a wagon. Put her in a wagon. No! 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 Let me go! Let me go! Let me go! Rig out of sight and run that horse off. Senor? What's the matter? You boys don't understand? We done got ourselves another flow Briggs. <sighs> That's right. Them boys at Furnace Hill ain't gonna know the difference. Come on, get it done. Now. Now. Furnace Hill. Furnace Hill? Never heard of it? It's a prison. About four days due east of here, as the buzzards fly. What do they want with me? It's simple enough. Mr. Skeels lost a prisoner, a woman. Her name was Flo Briggs. He killed her. Killed her? Because she wouldn't... Well, that's irrelevant. The point is, she's dead. And you're taking her place. Because Mr. Skeels gets $100 on the hoof. That's what he gets for every prisoner he brings in. When I get to the prison and I tell them who I am, they... <laughs> I want to see you trying to tell them you're not Flo Briggs. Lady, you're on your way to a black pit. If you think Gabe Skeels is bad, will you meet the men who run Furnace Hill? The 
territory is going to give them $50 a month. They try to keep you locked up. That's all you're worth to them, $50 a month. They won't give a hoot who you are or how you got there. I know Furnace Hill. I've had friends who have sent there. It's a jungle. It's something out of the dark ages. You're alone there, all alone. The only thing that matters is trying to stay alive. You mind your business and do what you're told, and maybe, just maybe, you won't leave it in a box. You was gone. Hmm? You. You. You're an animal. Ow! At a hundred dollars a head, think you can afford to kill two women in one day? Shut up. Keep an eye on him. We're gonna water the horses. wasn't very smart. I didn't ask your opinion, Mr. Burke Jordan. And who are you? Victoria Barclay. Victoria Barclay? From Stockton, California? Yes. <laughs> no, I don't believe it. <laughs> it's too good to be true. <laughs> well, what's so amusing about it? Hey, Skills, come here. Come here. What do you want? You know who you've got here? Who? Oh. That's Victoria Barclay. Of the Stockton, California Barclay. So? Skeels, you haven't been keeping up. I mean, everybody knows Victoria Barclay. That's one of the most respectable families in the whole state of California. Oh, yeah. Very, very respectable. Very rich, too. Right, Mrs. Barclay? She owns one of the largest ranches in the whole San Joaquin Valley. She's got money to burn. Yes. Yes, I've got money. And she'll pay you and let her go. Right, Mrs. Barclay? Shut up. Huh? 
How much? How much do you want? Well, if what the man says is true. If you really as rich as he says, about five thousand dollars. All right. Now let's have it. I'll get it for you in Hayes Center. Oh, you can get it for me in Hayes Center. Honey, there's a lot of things you could get for me in Hayes Center, including being arrested for kidnapping. Put them back in the wagon. Oh, no. See, I'll give you more. I'll give... Why? Why? You mean, why do I hate you, Mrs. Barclay? Do you? Well, no, Mrs. Barclay. Just your money. Move. Of course, I realize this isn't the kind of cuisine you're used to, but then uh, this isn't the palace in San Francisco, is it? No. You know San Francisco? I was stationed at the Presidio right after I graduated from West Point. Then I went back after the war, built myself a house on Russian Hill, spent a half a million dollars on it. That's quite a house. 25 rooms, a dozen servants. And I lived there all alone for two weeks out of every year. What business were you in? I was a mining engineer. I spent all my time in the camps. And one day I took a flyer on Old Glory Hall. Everybody said it had been worked out. I hit a vein that ran from there till a year from Tuesday. Three months, I was worth three million dollars. You don't believe a word of it, do you? Should I? It's the truth. Then I believe it. You better eat. It's slop, or it'll get worse in Furnace Hill. I'm not going to Furnace Hill. Oh? They'll have to kill me first. Three million dollars. I lost it. How? I built a railroad in Colorado. From my mine right through the mountains to Durango. All but 30 miles of it anyway. Then I ran out of money. Tried to borrow some. I couldn't do it. Why not? Because the syndicate of bankers wanted to freeze me out, that's why. Oh, they were very polite and very well mannered about it. And they were finished. They even owned the boots I was wearing. You might even know some of those gentlemen, Mrs. Barclay. Some of them might even be your good friends. They're your kind. And uh, did my kind put you in here? Well, it depends on how you look at it. I decided I should try to get some of the money back from those worthy gentlemen. I made a list of their banks. I got me some men together. We hit seven of them before the law cornered us at Gold River a few weeks ago. I got caught. Two of my men escaped and the rest got killed. Why are you so interested in me, Mrs. Barclay? Because I... Well, I just don't think you're the kind of man who would go to Furnace Hill without a fight. All depends. If you think I'm as dead set against it as you are, you're wrong. If it comes to a choice between Furnace Hill and dying, I'll take Furnace Hill. But you have plans. Do I? I think so. Huh? 
Good night, Mrs. Barclay. See you again. Mac, how are you? Fine, fine. How far down are you, Mac? Well, we broke 400 feet at the main shaft yesterday. If you'll just let us keep going. 400 feet, huh? Well, I think we intend to do just that. The other stockholders are down looking at the main shaft now. Uh, by the way, wasn't your mother supposed to come out with you? Oh, isn't she here? Here? No. She hired a buggy in town and rode out yesterday. I haven't seen her. Something must have happened to her. We better take a look. Did you tell Skeels the truth? About what? Being able to raise five thousand dollars in Hayes Center. Mm-hmm. You made a good guess last night, Mrs. Barclay. I do have plans. In about an hour, we'll be going through a narrow pass called the Patchy Gap. Two men who got away at Gold River are going to be waiting there. I had a friend make the arrangements before Skeels took me out of the jail at Gold River. I'm going to need some traveling money. Five thousand, and my men and I will take you with us. Otherwise? Otherwise, we leave you behind with skills. Apparently, you don't hate my money as much as you pretend, Mr. Jordan. Yes or no, Mrs. Barker? I'll get the money. No tricks. No tricks. I'll be out of this oven in about an hour. Gap. They must be good friends. Friends? It's just a word somebody invented for something that doesn't exist. Uh, Judd and Tim are doing this for only one reason. They think I've got some gold buried somewhere. Friendship hasn't got a thing to do with it. You must have had to work awfully hard at it to become as cynical as you were. Yeah, that's a fact. I came out of West Point. I was a regular knight in shining armor, swinging my saber around, looking for my first dragon to slay. There was one thing I didn't know about dragons. What's that? I fight back. I fight dirty. Like those estimable gentlemen that took my railroad away from me. Oh, they were very expert dragons. They knew every rotten trick in the book. Told you they were out there. Hey, Johnson, Tim. something, boy, the way that she was acting? Huh? This gap here is the ideal place for bushwhacking. So I sent my two men here around a long way, and they surprised them two boys and did a little bushwhacking of their own. <laughs> Like somebody lost a wheel. Look at this, Heath. It's hers. She could have unhitched the horse and gone for help. Got lost. You don't believe that, and neither do I. No, I don't.
check the horses. my ankle. We're never gonna find him in this dark. Someone. Someone? That's right. Our mother. She disappeared between Hayes Center and Rose Mountain Mine. Well, y'all have to excuse me for being so skittish. But I just lost me a couple of prisoners. Real mean ones, too. They killed my man here. We've been out trying to track them back there, but I think they got clean away. You say it's your mother disappeared on the Hayes Center Road? That's right. We found her buggy 10 miles outside of town behind some rocks. Well, we was on that road just the day before yesterday. Matter of fact, we cut off at about 10 miles outside of town. We didn't see no buggy anywhere. But we're going on to Furnace Hill now to let them know about these two escaped prisoners. And I surely will keep my eye out for them. Come on, help me load him up. To do that. Well, I guess I'm stuck with you. Come on. Where? A little trading post run by an old man named Ogden. I staked it out, and I thought Judd and Tim could break me out of the patchy gap. How far is it? 20, 25 miles doesn't make any difference. It's the nearest thing to civilization within 100 miles in any direction. Well, in that case, won't Skills guess that's where we're going? That's why we haven't got any time to waste. Find any tracks? Not a sign of them. You know something I've been thinking? They done gone to Ogden's place. It's a mighty long walk. Yeah, there ain't no place else for him to go. Come on. Yeah, look at that. 
sound. That's funny. Didn't they say they were going to Furnace Hill? Yeah, that's due east of here. How long have I been out? A little over an hour. You could have been five miles away by now. Perhaps even farther. Well, why aren't you? Because you were hurt. Now, look. Let's get one thing straight. We don't owe one another a thing. Not a thing. I didn't ask you to stay. You could have got on there. Get some water. 
Are you all right? Yes. Yes, yes, I'm all right. Inside. No. I'm comfortable right here. Why did you come back? I don't know, Miss. I, I guess I always did want to take one more crack of the dragon. Just to remember what it was like. This is some information I had the bank get me about Burke Jordan. His story was true, Jared. He, he did own a mine, and he was building a railroad to Durango. Oh? Jared, did you ever hear of Prado Valley? Prado Valley? Yeah. That's land the federal government's open for homesteading. Burke Jordan's railroad runs right through it. I think anybody who took it over and completed it would be making an excellent investment. Uh-huh. Probably would. You want me to look into it? Please. We'd probably be getting into quite a battle with the bankers who tried to squeeze him out. I know. But I want to complete that railroad, Jared. Even if it is too late for Burke Jordan, I want to prove that dragons don't always win. <laughs> Get fresh with you in there? Oh, no, I can't stand it in there anymore. I know just what you mean. Must be my arm in there, huh? You see them rocks over there? Oh, why don't you and I walk over there in the shade and let you get a little bit of fresh air? Would you like that? Get back inside there. Lock them in there. Come right here with me now. Just walk real slow. Make one little stop here. Get us a little bit of this. Like a little bit of this. so poorly. We still got four days to go to Furnace Hill. I can't get back in that sweat box anymore. Please let me ride outside. Honey, I don't make the rules. The men that own the prison make the rules. And the rules says that all prisoners got to ride inside the wagon at all times. But 
You know the old saying about rules, don't you? Hmm? That they're made to be broke? Well, maybe you and I could work a little something out. I mean, when you get to Furnace Hill, you're gonna find out mighty quick, girl, that uh, being nice to the guards is gonna make life a whole lot easier for you. Get up. Come on, get up. and get fresh with you in there? Oh, no. I can't stand it in there anymore. I know just what you mean. Must be my arm in there, huh? You see them rocks over there? Oh, well, why don't you and I walk over there in the shade and let you get a little bit of fresh air? Would you like that? Get back inside there. Lock them in there. Come right here with me now. Just walk real slow. Make one little stop here. Get us a little bit of this. Like a little bit of this. Feeling so poorly. We still got four days to go to Furnace Hill. I can't get back in that sweat box anymore. Please let me ride outside. Honey, I don't make the rules. The men that own the prison make the rules. And the rules says that all prisoners got to ride inside the wagon at all times. But you know the old saying about rules, don't you? that they made to be broke. Well, maybe you and I could work a little something out. I mean, when you get to Furnace Hill, you're gonna find out mighty quick, girl, that uh, being nice to the guards is gonna make life a whole lot easier for you. Get up. Come on, get up. <laughs> 